Okay, so my voice is uh, clear? Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Amr Ibrahim, um, uh, drilling field engineer. I will introduce myself first uh, before we start on our webinar. I am a senior drilling field engineer with uh, more than uh, 10 years of experience in uh, drilling uh, field engineering. Uh, my main experience is drilling HTHB wells, deviated horizontal wells, uh, drilling with heavy mud weights, uh, maybe up to 150 BCF. Uh, I have worked in the offshore and onshore rigs. Uh, I have experienced most or all of the drilling uh, problems. Also, I am accredited instructor and assessor for uh, IWCF or Sharp for Control International Certificates, and I'm working for a part time instructor. Uh, GSTC Egypt uh, Training Center. My education is a pre master year at uh, Petroleum Engineering at Cairo University and Bachelor degree of Petroleum Engineering at Seoul uh, University. So, inshallah, today our uh, agenda, you know, it's uh, a limited time webinar. We just will open up for the next uh, upcoming uh, drilling fluid school. I encourage you to attend it, it will help you a lot if you are going to proceed your career as a drilling fluid engineer. Uh, so our agenda for today is, uh, what is the mud engineer rule at the rig site? Uh, summary, quick summary of drilling fluid functions, uh, displacement scenario, and I will show you a real uh, displacement plan we have done on, on the rig, so you can sense uh, what we are talking about. And uh, we will end up with uh, the sneak peek of the upcoming drilling field course, what we are going to uh, talk about and what will be our agenda for the next upcoming uh, drilling field school. So let's start. So uh, what is the mud engineer rule in the rig site? So this is uh, the five pillars of the mud engineer rule on the next side, which are the inventory management, bits management, uh, mixing instructions, not testing, and reporting quality. This is uh, summarize all uh, or most of your uh, job duties as mud engineer on the rig. And for sure, I said it before, and I will say it every time I'm giving any webinar or course, that inventory management is number one duty of the mud engineer on the rig. And believe me, it is number one cause of firing a mud engineer from a rig. You may be an excellent mud engineer, technicality and operationally and personally, but maybe one issue or two on the inventory management, maybe you will leave the rig. Trust me. So every time I'm talking about the mud engineering rule in the rig, number one. Uh, Number one rule or job is to keep the inventory management. You have as assigned a mud engineer on the rig or even as a mud engineer who is doing a job on the rig, for example, uh, a special job or uh, OPM bridging job or something like this. You are uh, number one job requirement is to provide the chemical required for the drilling process for your drilling fluid. You should know the logistics of bringing chemicals to your rig, especially if you are working on offshore rig. The, the boats that bring the chemicals are not available every day. Even at the land rigs, you have trucks coming and back. You have a lot of operation around you. So planning for your inventory is number one rule. And Re try to remember it all the time. No one, no one will forgive you if you missed inventory management. You should have your chemical. You should have uh, the base fluid, the diesel. If you are using uh, oil based mud, you should have enough weighting material. And for uh, a lot of companies, especially the companies that are using high mud weight, they are saying uh, very clear that you should have enough weighting material to weight up the whole circulating system. 
for 2 BCF or uh, whatever uh, in BBG. So this is should be in count. We should be proactive. We should have the pre-planning to provide your inventory management. So if I continue talking about inventory management, the whole hour, it will not be enough. Maybe I will tell you stories of very well uh, organized and very well uh, good guys, uh, technically and personally, but they left the rig because of the inventory management. So no, to, no toleration on this. Number one rule uh, uh, for you as a mud engineer on the rig side is the pits management. When you arrive in your rig, after you check your inventory and uh, requesting the required the chemicals and all this stuff, you should uh, check your pits. What is the capacity of your pits, of your tanks? How will you accommodate the required fluid that you will use for drilling this section? Are you, are you planning to receive oil-based mud while drilling the current section? And this oil-based mud will be used for the next section? So you should plan for this. Are you have, for example, three fluid types on the bits, maybe you have water-based mud you are drilling with. You have kill mud you are pre you already prepared in case of any well control situation. And you are receiving oil-based mud. So how you are going to accommodate all of these fluids? So bits management is number two uh, and very important uh, rule for you as a mud engineer on the rig. Number three is the mixing instruction. As a mud engineer, you are not mixing yourself for sure on the hopper. You might help sometime, especially in the losses situation or in the tight situations, but you are not uh, required to mix yourself on the hopper. There are rust abouts, there are uh, mixing crew working for you, but you should provide the mixing instruction for the crew to help them mix what you need. I have already prepared for you uh, a copy for a mixing instruction just to, to make you feel what you are doing on the rig. This is uh, clear for you now, this word file. Hello? Uh, engineer Amr, uh, actually, uh, as the rules, we cannot uh, open the mic so they can uh, respond to the chat. Okay, so, okay. So, this is one of the mixing instruction we are preparing. For sure, I deleted everything related to any company because this is not uh, allowed to share. But this is just uh, 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 an example for the mixing instruction we are using. For example, in this situation, we are using OBM and we are trying to make to mix a dilution bill for uh, this, uh, for, for OBM. So we write a very clear mixing instruction. It contains the well name, the date, and the treatment starting time. And why this is important? Because sometimes you might uh, found the rig is uh, lazy or they, they, uh, they didn't mix your chemical on time. So you should have a proof that you provided a mixing instruction with the time. And you should give a copy for the direct man, for the AD, to pusher, night pusher, and give a copy also for the foreman. So this is not only a mixing instruction that you provide for the crew to mix your chemical, but it, it is uh, a very good uh, evidence for you that you provided this mixing instruction and in case of any problems, you will have this evidence. So you write everything for the direct man or the AD or the mixing crew. For example, make sure bit eight is clean and ready, open equalizer between bit eight and nine. So you have two bits we will mix on 
uh, the big tank. So we'll open the equalizer between bit eight and the bit nine. Transfer this month from here to here at 100 barrel of diesel. Mix at bit number eight and the nine the following chemical. For sure, I replaced the, the trade name for the chemical with the function, primary emulsifier, secondary emulsifier, uh, HTHB, flow dose reducer, and line. So you have to provide this mixing instruction for the drilling crew. This is one of your rules, and you should follow up with them. What they what uh, did they do? Do they uh, mix your chemical properly? For example, time that you should mix your chemical in uh, uh, in slow mood. For example, some chemical which uh, like the polymers. Uh, if if you mix it or if the mixing crew makes it very fast it will um, it will cause like fish eyes so you should tell the guys what is the mixing instruction what should they mix and what is the order okay so the order is important for mixing or not the order is very important and inshallah when we talk about uh, the, uh, the sneak peek for the upcoming drilling fluid school, you will see that we will talk about, inshallah, the mixing for water based mud and oil based mud. A quick example for this if we are mixing water based mud, so we should first treat the water, we should add caustic soda, soda ash to treat the water, then we should add the polymer first before the salt to avoid consumption of the free water. So we should mix the polymer first, then mix the salt with the proper concentration to avoid oversaturation. Then we add the viscosifier, but not the full concentration of the viscosifier to avoid over plugging. You see, all of this instruction, you should put it in paper and deliver it to Derek Man or mixing crew and make sure that everyone, every single one, know what he should do. And mixing order is very important. And when we talk about OBM, you will see how important is the mixing instruction uh, and the mixing in, and the mixing order. So this is number three. Uh, rule for you as a mud engineer on the rig. Guys, when you are uh, listening to me now, I'm a field engineer. Even if I'm trying to talk theoretically, I will tend to talk about the rig and what we are doing. And I think you are missing this part. You are missing the part of being on the rig, being, uh, seeing what we are really doing on the rig side. So this is will be my methodology at this webinar and at the upcoming uh, drilling fluid school, inshallah. Number four rule for you as a mud engineer is the mud testing. And mud testing is very important. All the five, this is five pillars. So all of them are very important. As we said, inventory management is number one, but all of them very important. So mud testing, you are mixing the mud. You should test it before start drilling to know this mud is uh, uh, as bare program, the parameter line up with the program or not. For example, for the OBM, when we mix fresh OBM, from your experience as a mud engineer, you will not find the parameters line up with the drilling program when you are mixing a fresh mud, don't panic. This is very normal. You should just display the OBM, uh, let it shear and heat, and you will get your parameters. So, for example, from experience, you will know this. For example, it's a case happened uh, before that someone was mixing, but he is putting the maximum concentration for everything for the OBM mixing instruction. And the result was that when the mud is sheared and heated, he got a very high uh, 
parameters. It's ne not needed parameter. These parameters, you can get it while drilling. So mud testing show you if you are lined up with the drilling uh, program uh, or drilling fluid program or not. When you are drilling, for sure you are, you will have contamination from the formation. For example, if you are drilling anhydride formation, you will get calcium contamination when you are drilling with water based mud, for sure. So when you do your tests for calcium content, you will find it high. So you have to intervene. You should give an instruction to Derek man, hey, we need to add number of sacks for soda ash because the calcium we treat it with soda ash, which is Na2CO3, the sodium carbonate. So, for example, you are doing the HTHB uh, fluid loss for OBM or water based mud. You found it high. So, you have to add HTHB fluid loss reducer. So, you are talking, the mud is talking to you through testing, and you are responding through treatment. So don't miss the communication or the messages that mud sending to you. Number four of mud engineer rule in the rig is the reporting quality. I was planning to put reporting quality is number two because it's really very, very important. And uh, if you don't report your status very well, you might get in trouble. Let me tell you one example. When we are drilling with heavy uh, mud, oil-based mud, say for example, 100 BCF, we should, if we are going to dilute this, uh, oil-based mud with uh, diesel or light mud to, for example, 80 BCF. So say, for example, you are adding some diesel on hourly basis, like five barrel per hour or 10 barrel per hour, and you are maintaining your parameters, you're adding the specifier, you're adding the required chemicals for this addition. If you put in the report, and this is a real case situation, as I said, I'm trying to provide you with what is already happening on the rig sites. If you put on your report that you diluted the active circulating system with diesel addition, if any problem happened, you, as a mud engineer, and your company might take MBT. Just because of this comment. So why? Because you should show that you didn't add diesel alone. You add diesel and, <coughs> and treat the mud with the proper chemicals to avoid bright sagging to avoid any loss of the parameters of the mud. Or you should, in the first place, to dilute the mud with uh, unweighted mud, unweighted, fresh mixed mud. So reporting all the managers from your direct manager to the top manager for the company you are working for or the client you are working with will not see what you are doing on the rig, but they will see your report. Let me tell you something. And this is, I swear, this is real case. One mud engineer is turn, uh, laid off from a company on the, you know, the Corona time when everything was uh, messed up and travel restrictions, all this stuff. And when everything is come back to normal, he didn't come back. Why? Because he has the worst reporting quality. 
So reporting quality is very, very, very important. You can put it number two, but I prefer this order because this order matching with what you are doing on the next side. You check the inventory, what is the required chemical, you plan your pits, you provide the mixing instruction for the new mud, you do mud testing, and while draining, you do mud testing and make treatment, and then you report everything in your report. So please, reporting quality, I can say is number two at the priority for you as a mud engineer on the rig. So this is the five pillars for you as a mud engineer on the rig. And we will move to next item for us on the agenda, but we can take some uh, questions about what we said uh, from the chat. I will not uh, answer any question that I didn't talk about just for the time. So, okay, okay I have a question from uh, Osama. Uh, mud waste disposal and the mud recycling, this task should also be inclined as key responsibility for mud engineer. Yes, you are right. Uh, but, you know, this has become very important when uh, you are working as offshore, when you have uh, the dryer uh, and you have uh, a special uh, waste disposal. But when you are working for land, uh, you you have waste bit and you have water bit and your waste is going to the waste bit and you are not fully responsible of that. You should uh, give hint to foreman or company man uh, that this waste bit is going to be full. You have to uh, bring trucks, vacuum trucks to empty it. You are right, this is important, but this is not the key responsibilities of mud engineer on the rig. What is the role of mud engineer during mud logging operation? Uh, just you provide to uh, the mud loggers, the mud uh, logging team, it is not mud logging operation, it is the logging operation because mud logging is different flow from logging operation on the rig, the wireline logging or TCL logging. So mud logging is different. I think you ask about the logging operation, the wireline logging operation. Uh, the rule is you provide a DMR or the, the drilling uh, mud uh, parameters report and you provide for them if they ask it, uh, assemble for the mud, assemble for the filter cake, uh, assemble for the filter itself. So they make resistivity test for all of this. So enough now with question, let's continue number two on our agenda. So the key drilling float functions and inshallah for the upcoming drilling float course, we will talk uh, very uh, detailed uh, drilling float functions and we will go in depth in three or four uh, functions for example the pressure uh, pressure control the hole cleaning and all this stuff so the drilling fluid key functions is for sure number one is to control the formation pressure you are drilling with a mud you are drilling formations this formation has uh, bore pressure or formation pressure you should apply a, uh, a pressure that work against the formation pressure, which is coming from the hydrostatic uh, weight uh, for the mud column. And you apply this pressure to control the well while drilling. For sure, you don't want any kick. You don't want any well control situation. And if you got any well control situation, all the trials that we are doing, the killing operation, the driller method, the wet and wet, all this stuff is to retrieve the status of that we are controlling the formation operation through the mud. So for example, we are drilling with 100 BCF uh, oil based mud and we got a kick. So we will shut down the, shut down, shut, uh, shut in the well 
assess the pressures, uh, uh, make our calculations, kill the well using the regular method or wet and wet. Finally, the target is to pump kill mud just to retrieve the status of controlling formation pressure. So the number one function for drilling fluid uh, for the drilling fluid is to control the formation pressure. Number two function. So number one, as we said, control formation pressure. Number two function is hole cleaning, remove drilling, cutting from the hole. And the hole cleaning, I think some of you see the, uh, the know-how PPT that we have shared in LinkedIn that talk about hole cleaning in uh, depths. Hole cleaning is very vital function of the drilling fluid. And without hole cleaning, we are really not drilling. We just make the cutting friable. And maybe we get a stuff, maybe we get back up and all this stuff. So hole cleaning is number two most important drilling fluid function. Also, while we are drilling, <coughs> we should provide gel strengths. Why? To suspend the parite and cutting under static and dynamic condition. We are drilling using bump. This bump is while running, so it is dynamic condition. So, but when we stop, what is the component of the mud that is responsible of lifting these heavy barite uh, solids and the drilled solids? So we should provide gel strains to our mud to provide this function. Also, we have to maintain our borehole stability. And Inshallah, when we talk about borehole stability and shell stability, you will find that all your technical work on the rig site is to maintain the shell and prevent any problem that caused by the shell. If I'm going to name us as a mud engineer or drilling fluid engineer a different name, so it will be shell engineer for sure. Because all your work on the rig is how to avoid the shell problem. When you are drilling with interactive shell, so you have to work with very inhibited water-based mud, or you prefer to work with oil-based mud because oil-based mud the shell will not see a water. It is, uh, it is emulsified phase. It is fluid phase. Emulsified with the base fluid, and it is not really water to the shell. So when we, are, we, will, when we will talk about the HTHB fluid loss uh, test for the OBM, all the math program, you will see the HTHB should be, for example, less than three, and in brackets, all oil. What does this mean? This means that you should make your test, and when you make the filtrate under the 500 psi differential pressure, you will get all the filtrate to be oil, no water. Because if you get water in the filtrate, so your, emulsif your emulsification is not good, and you might have shale problems or borehole stability problems. So borehole stability and shale stability is a big topic, and inshallah, we will talk about it in details in the upcoming course. What else? The parameter as a function of our drilling fluid. It provides the hydraulic horsepower to the bit. When we're drilling with, uh, uh, with, with the drilling bit, there is something very important called the hydraulic horsepower for the bit, the jetting action, uh, the TFA, which is the total flow area, which is calculated from the nozzle sizes. Hydraulic work, inshallah, we will talk about the rig hydraulics. And believe me, 
If you want to be a good man engineer, technically, you should, after knowing the basics for sure, you should know in depth the rig hydraulics, the polymer chemistry, and the clay chemistry. And inshallah, we will cover all of them in the upcoming uh, drilling fluid school. So the rig hydraulics is very important because if you have uh, enough jets with certain TFA with certain flow area, so you are sure that you have a proper hole cleaning for the, man, for the cutting that you are drilling. So provide hydraulic horsepower for to the bit. And also, <coughs> it provides, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Sorry guys. So it provides also the hydraulic horsepower required for, for, for example, for the mud motor. If you are if you are using a uh, mud motor, or even if you are using the new technologies of the RSAS or all of these technologies, it also depends on the uh, flow rate of the mud of the mud. And so when you are drilling with RSS system, the rotary, rotary steerable system. So the direction engineer tell the foreman or company man that we should stick with minimum, for example, 500 GBM gallon per minute while drilling. We cannot reduce this. So the mud also play a role to uh, provide the, the power required for all of these downhole tools. Also, it minimizes one of the functions also, it minimizes the loss of fluid to the formation. And this is one of the drilling fluid problems that we will cover at the end of the drilling fluid school, which is the loss circulation. This is, uh, I have read before uh, analysis for the loss circulation problems. It is responsible of 30% of the cost of drilling uh, worldwide. Because when you lost a mud, it is not only the cost of the mud. The operation, all the operation will be complicated because you are losing mud. So if you don't fill the well properly, so you might have well control issue. And maybe you have in uh, reactive shale or reactive formation in the section you are drilling. So you cannot drill blindly with water only. And you are caring about the hole cleaning. So what is the methodology for providing hole cleaning? All this stuff. So minimize the loss of fluid of the formation is very important. And also we can add to this, provide the bridging for the formation. When you are drilling, uh, with high overbalance to a mature uh, or depleted formation. So you should close it properly with the bridging material that you add to the drilling fluid to, to prevent any differential stock or to uh, prevent any losses. Also, one of the function for drilling fluid is to lubricate the drill string and uh, make cooling for the drill string and the bit. And this also is important uh, uh, function. I have a situation before on one of the rigs that we have a very high bottom hole uh, temperature that the MWD and directional tools has a lot of failures. So we bring a cooler unit on the service to provide cooling for the mud. So cooling of the mud, most of the, uh, most of the people dis discussing the function of the mud, seeing that cooling and lubrication is uh, a secondary or uh, very trivial function. But no, it is, it is important also, for sure it is not that important of the whole cleaning or formation uh, control formation pressure, but it's very, important also. So this is a quick <coughs> summary for the drilling fluid uh, functions. 
And as I uh, said to you, we will talk about all this function in details, in depth. We will go very deep in control formation pressure. We will talk, inshallah, about the formation pressure itself uh, and fracture pressure, what is the mud window, uh, what is the pressure calculation, and we will make also calculation for, uh, for the pressure, inshallah, in the drilling fluid school. So this is uh, second part of our agenda today. I will move to third part because I see time now is almost seven. So number three on the displacement scenario uh, on our agenda today is the displacement scenario. And I'm preparing, I have prepared for you also a real displacement plan to see what we are doing on the rig as we talk about this. So we have a displacement scenario. We might displace water based mud to water based mud. For example, in, when you are drilling the service section, you are drilling service section with is bad mud, which is water based mud. It is basically water, bentonite, sometimes caustic soda, sometimes soda ash, sometimes with lime, but mainly it is is bad mud, water, and bentonite. But when you finish the surface section, you displace to salt polymer mud or KCL polymer mud or any water based mud that you will use for drilling the, uh, for example, the 12 inch section or uh, the section before it. So you might displace from water based mud to water based mud. You might displace from water based mud to OBM. Most of the rigs or most of the drilling sites use uh, 838 section or eight and a half section and the uh, 578 section with OBM because these are reservoirs and you might use high uh, what a high weight of oil based mud or high weight of mud so it is preferable to use uh, OBM so you might displace from water based mud to oil based mud you might, you might make the reverse displaced from oil-based mud to water-based mud. And the most important one, and the one that uh, very clear, very important, and if you fail to do it, you might leave the rig, the displacement from OBM <coughs> to prime. Why it is very important? Because prime, you are mix clear prime, and you are filtering it, make it very clear. You are displacing very dirty fluid, which is the oil-based mud, to very clear, clean fluid, which is the prime. So it's very important uh, displacement. So what is the keys or key points for displacement before we see the actual plan? The keys here are the spacers. For example, when you are displacing from water based mud to water based mud, you might say to yourself, it's okay, I don't care about contamination. But if you are drilling with uh, this bad mud, which is high, high bentonite content, and you will displace to water based mud with controlled, controlled bentonite content five to 10 pounds the maximum. So you should take care about the contamination. So what you will do, simply you will mix a high, vis high viscous pill of the new mud and bump it first, and then you bump your new mud. And so you will have interface and you will dump this water uh, high vis and you will have clear or nearly clear uh, new mud. From water-based mud to oil-based mud. So this is our plan already. So I will stop here and show you the displacement plan. For this displacement plan, we have here, we, are, we were drilling with water-based mud. So the well contain water-based mud. And we are going to displace the well to oil-based mud. So 
This is displacement plan. And inshallah, when you are working, or if you are working now as a mud engineer, try to show your work through the professional paperwork. Displacement plan is one of them. So you should show the mud status, mud bit status, what you have now on your tanks, and show clearly what we are going to do while uh, displacement. So here, for example, we have bit number one and two is empty. These are shaker tanks. Bit number three, it's water-based mud, almost dead volume. We have oil-based mud in the intermediate, section one, section two. We have in the slug tank, high base water-based mud, okay? We have in bit number eight and nine water-based mud. In bit number 10, 12, 13, we have oil-based mud. And in bit number 14, we have diesel. So the plan is to displace the OPM and remove the water-based mud to, uh, from the hole to the surface. And this will bring us back to the bits management. So before displacement, you should know exactly what is the volume of your mud that you will need to fill the hole, the complete hole, and to have enough volume on the surface to start drilling. For most of the cases, we don't have enough volume to drill with full system. I mean full system from the shaker tank to suction tank, all full with oil-based mud. But we start with short system. We bypass all the shaker tanks to suction tank and start drilling until we mix or receive another oil-based mud. But you should also know where you are going to receive your water-based mud. Are you going to dump it all to the waste pit? So you should pay attention to the question of Osama, engineer Osama. You might have a full waste bit. So you should notify the company man, hey, I will displace the well and we are going to receive around 900 barrel of water based mud. The waste bit will not be enough. Or, and this is a trend uh, uh, or the attitude of most of the drilling company now, you will receive the water-based mud on the tanks, and this water-based mud will be transferred to another tank, another rigs that uh, are using the service, uh, drilling service sections. So you should know exactly what you are going to do through bit management, and it is very important. Don't do it at the rig, at the mud system while you are making displacement and you have company man with you on the mud tanks and you act like you are surprised of the return volume from the well. This is not professional at all. This is will cause a very bad impression about you as a mud engineer. Let me tell you an interesting story. It is, this is personal. I went to a rig one time and the foreman was tough a little bit and he was not good with me at the first time. But when we have well control situation, he recommended a scenario for bit management on the mud system. I talked to him clearly, if we did, if we do this scenario, we will stop at the middle of displacement of Kilmat and we will not have a space. And I explained to him my planning. And he is very convinced with my plan. And after finished the job, he came to me and thanked me that I came with this plan and he said that he realized while we are displacing that 
if we do his plan, we will stop and we will have a bit issue. So his treatment with me is, was different and we became a friend and all this stuff. So don't, uh, don't put yourself in the situation of surprises on the mud tanks. You should know what you are mixing, the volumes, the volume of the well, what you are receiving, and also the, the bit management include what the volume you can receive of OBM if you are going to receive OBM. So this is also very important. So here at the plan, the plan is to displace 120 BCF OBM mud. So it is written uh, clearly that the return mud from the hole will be received at bit number three, then transfer it to semen tanks. So this is delivered very clear that we will receive the water based mud here at bit number three, and we will run the mud cleaner bump and send this mud to the semen tank. What is the bumping uh, scenario? What is the spacer that we are going to use for this displacement? Try to imagine this one. You have water-based mud on the hole and you will displace to OBM. So you don't want any contamination from water based mud to oil based mud. You don't want to contaminate your water based mud. Your oil based mud, sorry. This is the first, this is the most important. Even if you got little contamination for water based mud, it will not be, uh, be a, a big issue. But the OBM is a big issue. So you should bump the first high vis water based mud to touch the water based mud which is in the hole. Okay. If you displace like this, only high vis water based mud, so you will have a big contamination of uh, water based mud with the OBM, right? So you should bump another spacer. Sometimes we use only diesel. Sometimes we use only diesel as a spacer, second spacer, secondary spacer. So first one is the high base water base mud, which was here from slug tank, bit number seven. And we bump 50 barrel of diesel from reserve, reserve 14. But sometimes some foremans don't like to bump diesel uh, as a spacer. Why? Because diesel is uh, seven BBG, which is 52 BCF, and you are bumping 120 BCF oil based mud, and you are displacing, for example, 80 BCF or 90 BCF water based mud. So there is a big uh, difference in the uh, in the weights. So some foremen don't like to bump this diesel. So we might bump high vis oil based mud. So we take like 30 barrel, 40 barrel of the oil based mud and make it viscous and bump it so that this high vis oil based mud touch the high vis water based mud and contaminate with it and touch also with the new oil based mud and we can discard this interface and we have our clear mud. So you should show what we are going to bump, the high vis water bill the diesel bill and and then state clearly from where you will bump your mud so here line up mud bump on bits number four five six which is equalizer already orbit so this is a suction tank four five six intermediate tank suction one suction two this is the active tanks. And line up the mixing hover to transfer from bit number 10, 12, 13 to the active tanks while bumping. 
for sure because when you bump you for example you will fill the hole with 900 barrel and this 900 barrel is not all available uh, on your active tanks so you have to transfer the best practice here is don't don't change the suction tank of the pump while displacement and keep this bits number four, five, six until OBM is received to service. Why? To avoid any bump interruption and to uh, uh, minimize the volume of the dead volume you will leave on the tanks. Because when you bump with the mud bump, you are afraid that you will take a vacuum through the mud bump and so the direct man will switch very early and maybe you have 50 barrel or 70 barrel dead volume and you need this volume because you don't have enough volume to uh, to lose so don't change the suction tank and once the interface come to service dump the interface dump the sand trap clean sand trap when you got clear obm is confirmed by mud engineer using the es meter one of the tests for obm we will take the mud to uh, bit number four, five, six, and the check mud with in and out. So, this is real case displacement plan displaced from water based mud to uh, oil based mud. The last one from oil based mud to prime. It, this is the most difficult one. Why? Because you need to clean the well very well before bombing the prime. So this is a big story. Inshallah, we will cover it in the upcoming uh, course. You will have to bomb solvent and uh, uh, and surfactant, surfactant to uh, break uh, the emulsion of the OBM of the drill string or the casing. You need to clean all of this. You need to bump for sure diesel uh, first, then surfactant solvent with certain concentration, bump water until you got clear water, make something called the casing pickling, and then tubing pickling, then dry. It is very long story. Inshallah, we will cover it. But this is the most important displacement that we have on the right side. And the preparation for it, believe me, it takes like four to five days. Tanks management, cleaning, all this stuff. <coughs> okay, so so this is the end of uh, of uh, point number three, uh, and the remaining will be the sneak peek for uh, the next course. It will be very quick because we already uh, past seven o'clock. So the sneak peek for the training course, it will be very quick. So just to know what we are going to talk uh, about in the next course, inshallah. So quickly, we will uh, cover some similarity between the human blood and the drilling fluid. And everyone know the importance of human blood. And so we will compare between the importance of human blood to the body and drilling fluid to the well. We will talk in depth uh, with the whole cleaning. And you might see this one, uh, this uh, presentation on the LinkedIn. We will talk about the whole cleaning in the vertical uh, uh, from 30 to 65 degree deviation and horizontal weld and what is the avalanching and everyone might consider that the whole cleaning uh, is um, uh, is very difficult or the most difficulty on the horizontal section but no the most difficulty of whole cleaning here in this uh, deviation because of the avalanching effect or boycott effect, we will cover this one. For 
everyone who are going to attend the course and don't know, uh, don't, didn't visit a drilling rig before and need uh, a quick familiarization with the rig, we will cover it. We will talk uh, in depth or with the circulating system because we will need it for sure. So you should know what you are talking about when I talk to you, the soil control equipment, the mud tanks, the suction line, the mud bomb, the return line, all this stuff, you should know it before we commencing with our uh, course. Uh, the, the mud engineer rules that you already here today, inshallah we will cover it again in the upcoming course. We will talk about the pressure, as I told you, in uh, very depth, we will talk about the calculation, the uh, pressures, uh, formation pressure, abnormal, subnormal. We will talk about uh, the hydraulics, regular hydraulics. And believe me, regular hydraulics, one of the most difficult topics uh, plus the clay chemistry on the drilling flow. So regular hydraulics, you need to understand it at least 50% or 40% you will need it. The logical models, uh, the skin effect, when we talk about the uh, minimize the formation damage, we should know what is the skin effect and what you are doing to minimize it. Okay. Uh, the leak of test and its calculation and what is the minimum horizontal stress, the maximum horizontal stress, vertical stress. We will talk about uh, most of the problems that we will uh, fa interface or face on while drilling. The loss of collision, hole enlargement, the hole cleaning, the restring fatigue. Maybe you have tight hole or stuck pipe, differential stuff. The selection of uh, our system. So all of this. For example, this differential stuck snapshot. We have the drill pipe here. We have high overbalance. We don't have the proper filter cake, and uh, the filter cake is uh, is acting uh, improperly. So we have differential stuck. The key seat is stucking. Why it's happened? How we can solve it? And uh, this is uh, maybe. If anyone see the sneak peek, you might uh, think, what is this? Why you are adding a part of the kill sheet inside our sneak peek? This is uh, uh, an intention because we will use the kill sheet to calculate the volumes of our will and the strokes and all this stuff. So I, as I told you, I'm an instructor for well control and I see this part of the kill sheet is uh, very easy to be used to calculate the volumes, the capacities, all this stuff for uh, for your will. So we will talk about the volume calculation through this part of the kill sheet. We will we will talk about the clay chemistry and the clay structure. And trust me, again, if you want to be a good mud engineer, technically, you should uh, strengthen yourself in rig hydraulics, clay structure or clay chemistry and polymer chemistry. Besides the basics for sure. The basics are basics. This is to be good mud engineer. This is an example of the clay hydration and why we are uh, uh, interested in the dehydrated ion and the hydrated ion of this uh, chemical. For example, we have the sodium montomorolite, which is the bentonite, when we have it dehydrated, it is 1.9 angstrom. But when we put water to the bentonite, the hydrated ion become 11.2. So you have a lot of gap, a big gap between the clay platelets here. The montomorolite, which is the bentonite, sodium montomorolite, when you add water, you will have a big gap. So what you are go going to do, so you might treat the system with potassium. Potassium will replace the sodium and this will reduce, see here, reduce the hydrated ion. So <laughs> I will not uh, bother you with this explanation. It will be covered inshallah, but just, just this, these are for you to, to know what you are going to do. Also, the, as I talked to you, the hydration of sodium montomorolite and what is the effect of it? Uh, you have big gap here, 
and uh, you want to reduce this gap. Sure, we will talk about the mud testing, oil-based mud, water-based mud. Uh, I don't have, we, we have some videos on YouTube so we can play, but for sure I'm not authorized to make uh, any videos for any test on the rig side. So we might use some videos on YouTube. Uh, this is, for example, the retort, and uh, this is the end of uh, the sneak peek. And this is the end of the webinar today. Thank you for listening, and uh, I hope you like it. And inshallah, we are open to uh, question and answers. So uh, thank you, Engineer Amr, for delivering this nice presentation. Uh, please uh, fill this, this form, uh, because this feedback is very important for us and Engineer Amr as well. Uh, so to make sure of what are the strength points and negative points as well, so that we can develop. And I think, uh, Engineer Amr, there, there is uh, only one question by Engineer Usama. Uh, what recommendation you can give for a starter? I think he is asking, Drilling mud design is so complicated and the many parameters need careful optimization procedure. So if one likes to learn deeper about mud design, what recommendation you can give for a starter? Also, uh, are there any software packages that are specialized in drilling mud design? Okay, we cover this uh, question and this one. Uh, how does the mud engineer direct his instruction to technician in the field when there is an urgent need to change the mud mixture instantaneously in order to maintain a quick control over a uh, thing going. Uh, you are you are you are living in the rig so you have direct contact with the direct man uh, and uh, I am following this uh, methodology that you should uh, inform the direct man uh, what you are doing try to explain to him because sometimes you uh, if you are working as a one-man job, and this is the worst case for a mud engineer, it is not human at all, but this is the case. So if you are telling the direct man what, uh, what you are doing, why you are doing this, so he might do something uh, correct while you are sleeping. Uh, regarding instantaneously, it is, uh, it is very uh, easy. It's not that easy, but uh, the rig is equipped with the, re the required uh, tools, for example, you have four Hobart, you have crane, you have forklift, uh, you have, when you have urgent situation, you will have full manpower, not only the two guys or three guys on mixing Hobart, you have all the guys. So uh, to change instantaneously, uh, you will do it. Don't worry, uh, it will be not that uh, difficult. Uh, communication procedure during emergency, during emergency, for sure you have papers to deliver, but you will be on the system all the time during emergency. And not only you, you will have foreman, you have maybe drilling engineer if it is here. And if the emergency extended, you might have extra mud engineers to help you. You may have your uh, supervisor also come to the rig. So you provide normally with uh, an, an instruction on paper and you uh, become uh, on the system with him to follow up everything he is doing. Uh, the railing mud design is so complicated and the many parameters need careful optimization procedure. If one likes to learn deeper about mud design, uh, as Mr. Karim, uh, as Engineer Karim said, there is a, a software for this. And uh, when you work for a, for a company and you go to the office, uh, you will have the exposure to uh, their design uh, software for this. And you also use the previous wells uh, for optimization. Uh, and you got also a recommendation from the client that we need to use this mod with these parameters to provide what we are, uh, what we are intending to do. So this is the advanced question uh, for the mud design, but there is a software uh, uh, software available on the market. And if you are work uh, for a company, you will get its software for this. <coughs> uh, how uh, could we prevent differential stuff? We will cover all of this, but quickly uh, we should provide 
uh, optimum filter kick. Uh, and if we are drilling uh, uh, in depleted formation, we should provide the proper bridging materials. And we should do the particle plugging test, uh, which is a PPT. It's very difficult test. And you know, we are making it, for example, at 5,000 PSI differential pressure. You can't imagine every time every mud engineer is doing this test is afraid. But for sure, there is a safety procedure to, to follow it. But try to imagine that you are working with 5,000 PSI or 400, uh, 4,500 PSI. So differential is taking, uh, it's very important. Uh, and you have the tools to prevent it through the Ultima filter cake, the bridging material, and choosing of the proper mud weight also, because high overbalance increase your chance for the pressure sticking. Uh, thank you, thank you for you. Uh, the rule, apologies. Okay, thank you, Muhammad. Uh, how can we optimize uh, drilling fluids for fractured formation to avoid fluid loss? Uh, it is similar to this question. Uh, we should add uh, LCM. Uh, we should have uh, LCM on the system. We should add bridging material. We should optimize uh, the, the fluid, uh, the mud fluid, because don't uh, don't increase uh, the mud weight unless you really need. Uh, we just uh, if, for example. We are we have like 5,000 psi formation pressure, so try to design your fluid to provide 200 psi, uh, 200 psi uh, margin, drilling margin or trip margin. Don't increase your mud weight until you need it, okay? And load your system with the required LSM material, with the required bridging material, and enjoy uh, your drilling, inshallah. So. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for everyone. Say thanks to me. So I think this is the end of uh, the questions and uh, our webinar. Thank you very much for uh, listening, and I hope inshallah uh, I see you in the next uh, drilling fluid school. Uh, keep in touch, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Engineer. Thank you. Thank you for your time.